Hi everybody, this is Kurt with Two Brothers Hobby and we're here today to talk about soldering. And we're going to go ahead and start off by talking about the necessary components to get up and going successfully with solid solder joints that are both mechanically, physically, and uh, electrically sound. So we don't want failures in the air, we don't want failures at our battery connectors, and we certainly don't want failures going to our brushless motors. And all those connections oftentimes require soldering of some type. So let's get you familiar with the basics and move through um, the steps. The first thing to do is familiarize yourself with the, the pieces you'll need to do successful soldering. A uh, soldering gun, of course, uh, is your choice. You can get one, you can get them at Radio Shack, you can get them online. Um, I, the one I have here is a 35 watt uh, WP35 Weller that I've used for years. I have a few of these actually, and um, as you can see, it's, it's well worn. The, uh, the dirt here on the shaft is, is not a problem. It just happens when you slide it in and out of the holder, it kind of builds up a little bit of a uh, of um, corrosion and oxidation, but that doesn't hurt a thing. Um, using a, a small chisel or medium chisel tip on it, uh, which works quite well for hobby soldering. If you want to get into the finer stuff, you have to put a smaller tip on there. But it's interchangeable tips on the Wellers and, and many of the other brands out there. So get yourself a soldering iron. You don't need a fancy base station or a soldering station. Just get one that plugs directly in the wall. Uh, this is a 35 watt, 120 volt, uh, about 40 bucks or so. Uh, you can find them all over the place. So um, they'll get pretty hot. Uh, Weller 35, 35 watt will probably get it right around 800 degrees at full temperature. So uh, solder flows freely at uh, about 370 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, so it's plenty hot enough for the for the projects you're going to be getting your hands on. Um, the uh, next piece is a sponge or a rag, either a wet rag or a sponge. A uh, cotton. Don't use synthetic fibers; they'll burn and melt, and you'll have a problem. But you can use uh, a um, a sponge, a wet sponge or a, a cloth rag. The next thing is solder. In order to solder you need solder. So rosin core solder, the type is a type of solder you're looking for, rosin, R-O-S-I-N, rosin core. Um, and uh, the, this is 44 rosin core solder. I use Kester's solder. It flows well. It's very predictable. It's very consistent. Uh, it's great for making uh, uh, all the RC flight connections I make from battery connections to, uh, to ESCs, to, to brushless motors, whatever. It flows extremely well, melts nicely, and has uh, some great flux inside. The flux, the core, the rosin core, the rosin flux, is referring to a cleaning, a cleaning agent built into the solder. So you have the outside lead and tin, which this does contain lead, so be careful when you're messing around with solder. Don't inhale the vapors. Uh, don't hold the empty pieces, the extra pieces in your mouth and try to solder with your mouth. I've seen guys do that a lot over the years. Um, it's pretty dangerous stuff. You're playing around with lead, and we all know lead's bad for us. So. Steer clear of the, the uh, exhaust or the fumes coming off of it. Make sure you're in a, a well-ventilated well area and, and don't put the stuff on your mouth and you'll be all right. But the, um, wash your hands after you handle it as well. Um, you should be fine. But this is a, this is a what they refer to as a, t a tin or a, a, um, a uh, 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 alloy. It's, it has lead in it, a lead, uh, percentage of lead in the actual solder itself. But it also has this rosin core in the center which cleans the material, cleans the connectors that we use, cleans the wire as it heats up and the, the rosin flux flows into the material, flows into the braided wire, it cleans out any impurities, all the oxidation, everything is, is uh, neutralized and you're able to get a nice, good, clean adherence to the, uh, to the, uh, the, bra the, the uh, copper strands in the wire, so, as well as the, the tin connectors. So use a good rosin core solder, the solder is pretty much the key, as long as you've got plenty of heat and a great solder, you'll have really good uh, soldering experiences. So uh, a lot of different times out there's hobby specific. Novak uh, uh, makes a solder. There's a, a bunch of different manufacturers that offer rosin core solder or uh, uh, solder appropriate for the types of connections we're doing. And then my last little recommendation for you, 10, 10 bucks, maybe 15 bucks. You can find them all over the place. Uh, these are called helping hands. And you go into any electronic store, you look, you type in helping hands on the internet, it'll bring up Exactly what you see here. I think there's the same company that makes almost all these things. It's amazing. Everywhere you go, it's the same um, uh, Taiwanese alligator clips on the same uh, powder-coated base station, so uh, base base plate. So um, uh, helping hands are just that. They're a tremendously easy way to hold your material, which gets hot, uh, in an exact position. You can put the wire on one side, the connector on the other, to line the two up, touch the, the iron to it, and you've got a nice solid solder joint without anything transferring to your fingers. Or if you're desoldering, if you hold the wire and you hold the connector, the wire will go flying off because there's, there's memory in the wire, there's some tension on the wire, and fling 500 degree solder in your face. So helping hands can be a very nice thing. They're cheap. This set has been with me for years, they'll last a lifetime. So uh, they're a non-wear item, I think. 
Uh, the type of wire you're going to be using in the hobby industry is going to be typically your 14. For the, this is for battery or ESC connections. It varies tremendously for motors and also for uh, radio components. It's much smaller, but we'll talk about the thicker wire soldering. It's more difficult. Um, 16 gauge, 14 gauge, even 12 gauge. I've used 12 gauge as well when I have a longer run and some very high amperage. So uh, 16 gauge is probably the most popular in most ESC connections. The first step, of course, is uh, cutting it easy. Use some side cutters. Uh, make sure it's a nice clean cut. Trims up easy. A little piece goes flying. Watch your eyes. Uh, and nice clean cut there. If you have wires sitting around for a long time, this actual tip, you can notice on this one, the tip of this wire is kind of dark compared to the other side. You've got a nice shiny wire and a nice in a dark center. Um, that's oxidation on the wire. That oxidation makes it difficult to solder. So cut a clean edge on your wires before you get started. Look at that real quick. And you'll see that it's all shiny like the other end now. So we have two shiny ended wires that are ready for soldering. We'll go ahead and strip it. Now you can get your own choice of wire strippers. There's super cheap ones you can find at, at, um, at discount stores. Uh, they're just like this. They have pretty much no name on them. They'll handle a varying gauge uh, wire, uh, 10 gauge, and this one up to 22. They work pretty well. You know, the bars are the, uh, the two, uh, the two uh, uh, stripping uh, uh, handles will get a little bit out of alignment sometimes. You've got to kind of watch them, but uh, they do a pretty decent job. It's better than using side cutters. Uh, try to strip it or, or a utility knife to cut it because you're always cutting the braids of the wire then and reducing the, uh, the current capacity of the wire whenever you start stripping those little pieces out. So there's a pair of strippers I've used for years and they're just handy. They're, they're auto strippers and what they do is you slip the wire in, you find the right size. Uh, this is a 16 gauge wire so we want to go down here to the 16 gauge and uh, what it does is auto strips. Just the right size, uh, you get a nice clean strip uh, with, um, with no problems whatsoever. As far as the jacket, in fact, you'll notice there's a tiny little bit of jacket left uh, right up against the wire, which means it cut really close to the wire but didn't cut into the wire, so that's a good thing. Um, we're ready to tin. Tinning wire is the first step, tinning your connector is the second, uh, the second step. So let's go ahead and tin this wire. Tinning your wire involves simply having a little piece of solder hanging out, which is the easy way to do it if you've got a roll of solder. Stick a piece up in the air like that, and what we're going to do is we're going to uh, we're going to go ahead and flow a little bit of solder into this wire, and I'll gently twist it while I'm doing it. Um, I've been banging this wire around; it has some brass, some strands sticking up. I just had to level that out, so I'm going to go ahead and melt some solder into it and roll a little bit as I do that. And what I'll end up with is a nicely tinned wire. That's ready to uh, that's ready to go on a connector. Now you notice there's there's solid tinning all the way around that wire, including the end. And in fact, if we do a cross cut now, and we take a look, these other strippers they don't tend to allow the wire to fly as far. What you'll see is it looks like an actual solid piece of wire. So that solder flowed all the way into that uh, to that wire, and it now created essentially a solid conductor. But that's actually um, solder. So that whole thing will melt and adhere extremely well to our connector.